We're on our way to go meet Petra Baron Costain. Petra is a graduate student working on a method to separate a specific metal from rock samples using a process called flotation. She invited us over to tour her lab and I'm gonna help her conduct an experiment. Now, do I know what a flotation process is? Not really. Do I remember the name of the exact metal we're separating? Not a clue. But when someone offers you the opportunity to play with chemicals in a safe and controlled environment with proper supervision, of course, then you have to take it. Let's go see what a mineral processing researcher does in real life. Let's start by you telling me a little bit about yourself. I'm at Queen's University and okay. I get to work in the CAMMET Mining Lab through the Research Affiliate Program. Okay, what's CAMMET Mining? CAMMET Mining is part of Natural Resources Canada and they do a whole bunch of mining research uh, and they research all sorts of things, you know, stuff on green mining, stuff on repurposing tailings from, you know, previous mining projects. What about you? What is your work? Uh, I'm working in mineral processing, so it's one of the first steps that you do um, when you want to upgrade an ore and get, you know, your fancy product at the end. My work goal is to uh, upgrade an ore from Quebec uh, so that we can get niobium oxide out of it. So niobium is a critical metal, okay. and uh, we use it to make really high strength, um, low alloy steels. Okay. So they can be used in airplanes or in the tech sphere. You know, we're trying to look at how we can develop processes to get niobium out of ores that are, you know, usually considered untenable. Per ton of material you take out of the earth, there's only a very small amount of niobium oxide in it. Our niobium oxide is held in pyrochlor, which is the mineral, okay. and it's like got these little tiny pieces that are spread all throughout the rock. So that means that you have to break it like lots and lots and lots of times before you've liberated these tiny little particles. We're gonna do froth flotation. We are gonna put this ore, which has been ground really small, like I was just talking about. We're gonna put it in this cell and put an impeller into it so that it agitates it um, really fast. And then we're gonna add some flotation reagents. They're going to attach to the value mineral and they're gonna make those minerals hydrophobic. So when we feed air into the cell and it creates bubbles, they're gonna to attach to the bubbles and they're gonna get floated right up to the top. That's really cool. Yeah, it's actually very intuitive. What's next? Well, I got a bunch of safety gear for you in the lab. Let's go. Okay. So welcome to lab 271. Wow. This is where the magic happens. Ooh, it's very sciencey. I like I it. I know, right? What's the, what's the plan? <laughs> We're getting ready to be so safe in the lab. <laughs> okay. Awesome, okay, I'm ready to go. So where are we going now? We're going down to the basement okay. to look at some mills uh, and grind some rocks. Let's are go grind excited? some rocks. Yes, let's do it, all right. Great. This is the uh, wet sample preparation room. Okay. And this is where we're gonna prepare some sample. We start with these. Oh, thank you. Which are drill cores from the deposit. We crush these down. Everything in here is smaller than 600 microns. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, it's not small enough. So what do, we, what do we need to do to get it smaller? Um, we need to grind it, which okay. is just a slightly different way of making it smaller. So I want 80% of the sample to be smaller in diameter than 25 microns. I will put it through a sieve, Okay. and I'm gonna grind it, uh, and then I'm gonna put it through a sieve again, uh, and then we're gonna have our sample that we can take back upstairs to the lab and do some tests on. Now we're gonna float. Ideally, at the end, we should get a concentrate that looks like this. And what do you do with this after? Well, then we're gonna take it over to the leaching room. We're gonna leach it with acid. Which I'm gonna do, go mm -hmm. on. Yeah, we'll discuss that. First, we're gonna make our collector solution because when things are in solution, they disperse easier. It's gonna make it easier for the chemicals to attach to the particles. So while we're waiting for that to go, we're gonna make uh, some transformer oil solution. Press down, all the way. put it in, release. There mm -hmm. we go, okay. Now press down all the way. All the way. Now, oh we're gonna God. use transformer oil. How's that? Beautiful. Okay, and put it in the little one here, little right? One. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we just put oil in water. Um, and famously, they, they don't, don't mix, mix very yeah. well. So we're gonna have to sonicate this. This basically vibrates really fast and it's gonna agitate this mixture so much that the oil is dispersed. Before you do anything, you wanna make sure that the amplitude is 
at 40% or lower or else it'll break your glassware, which I've done and it sucks. <laughs> Another important thing about these experiments is that everything has to be the same every time. Okay. So I always do it at exactly 40% for two minutes. So this is our collector. Uh, it turns everything like orange. And then this is SHMP, which is a dispersant. You know how we talked about how it's very finely ground? Yes. It tends to like stick to itself. And this stops it from sticking to itself. Okay, now that we've measured our reagents, we have 0.7 grams of SHMP, and we have 3.14 grams of Fluoria 7510. This is the benzohydroxamic acid that we talked about that's gonna stick to our pyrochlor and okay. float it to the towel. So we leave that to dissolve, and while we're doing that, we're gonna put our ore in the cell. I wanna make it 50% solids, okay. so I'm gonna put 2,000 milliliters in because we're putting 2,000 grams of uh, solid in here. I'm gonna need you to step back for this little bit. So this is the impeller. It spins and it okay. agitates the mixture and it also has little holes in it to allow air to come in through here. Oh, okay. So air's drawn in and it goes right down to the bottom and then it bubbles So it's up. your like frother. Yeah. So we're gonna add two of our reagents right now. So that's the dispersant and you can just like knock it into here. And just like. Oh, shake it in. Just add yes. it right in. Just right in, all right of it? Right in, all of it. Okay. And now we're gonna start our timer. Our right, timer, okay. And we just let it mix for 10 minutes. So we do nothing for 10 minutes. We do nothing for 10 minutes. Has it been 10 minutes yet? Not quite, it's been 38 seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so it's been we're 10, 10 okay. minutes. So do I grab this one here? Yes. Do I pour it in? Do you trust me with that? Or? I trust you absolutely with that. Okay. Pour it on in. This is a frother, so it's gonna make it frothy. It's also really smelly, so I am gonna put it in the fume hood after we're done. Add this in. Okay. Oh, wow. So you'll notice this a little darker, because yeah. you know the stuff we're collecting is darker than most of the gang minerals. So you just Scrape. bring it. Yeah, and uh, don't don't go too deep. We, uh. we don't want to go below where this like froth is. Maybe like get some from the back. All this stuff on top should ideally have almost all of our niobium. Usually I get a recovery of like around 96%. So lots of minerals are like very similar to each other. They have very okay. similar surface characteristics. The uh, benzohydroxamic acid that we're using here also binds to like carbonates and silicates uh, and pyrite. The leach that we're gonna do next specifically targets carbonates. Uh, and then the amine flotation that's after that targets silicates. So I've been doing this for 28 minutes now mm -hmm. and I can't feel my arm. Mm -hmm. um, that's how you know you did it right. Yeah, that's good. It looks great. What's next? Well, we're gonna filter it. Uh, I'm gonna sample prep it, which means that I'm, I'm gonna put it in a bag. And then we're gonna take it over to lab 279 and leach it. And that's where I'll do the acid leaching. Well, we'll come back to that idea. Okay. Now okay. we're gonna do some acid leaching. Awesome, I'm gonna do some acid leaching. Okay. Yeah, what so do you have there? I've got this concentrate that we literally just made in the other room. Yes. So let's start by measuring out some water. We need 580.2 milliliters or grams to make 25% solids. So the next thing we're gonna do is put our stuff together in the reaction vessel. You sound a little bit like Bane from <laughs> Nolan's Batman. But... That's what I was going for. <laughs> Are you ready for the big responsibilities now? Grab our reaction vessel. So I, I put it in here, mm -hmm. here, and then this goes here. Yeah. Okay, now she's mixing. It's at a pH of about six, which is what we'd expect. Then you want to insert the thermocouple, which is part of the heating mantle setup because it measures the temperature inside the liquid. We're missing one magic ingredient. Okay. We need the uh, deionized uh, dihydrogen monoxide. Got it, okay, perfect. Perfect. What he doesn't know is that he's looking for water right now because we can't trust him around dangerous chemicals like that. Dihydrogen. It might actually be my favorite part of the process. We're making like soluble salt. It's protonating the minerals so that they can go into solution and then we can filter them out uh, and they go into the leachate carbonates, calcites, they are the kind of minerals that are going to dissolve when we do this. Now we're going to turn it up to 400 RPM. And you can see that the pH on here went from about 7 to 0.62. 
Now we're turning this on and it's already been calibrated to uh, bring the temperature of the solution to 50 degrees Celsius and this is going to run for two hours and by the time those two hours are done this heat should have risen quite a bit because the reaction is neutralizing the acid and then I can filter it out and uh, we have a nice little coffee at the end. Okay, good news. Uh, I found your supervisor, Maz, and he said to give you this. Careful. Now, what was it? Deionized, um, what was it called? De Deionized dihydrogen monoxide? Yeah, so what is that? Yeah, that's water. Um, I just, I needed to get rid of you. I'm sorry. The reaction is happening as we speak. Oh, good, good. All that's left to do is uh, watch it for two hours. Okay, so this is the end of the process, right? More or less? More or less, yeah. Petra, thank you so much for spending the day with me, showing me everything that you do. It's really cool. Thank you for coming out and learning about rocks and things Yay. with me. Awesome, it's very thank fun. you. Some of our experts, like Petra, work in the lab, but many work in the field. Check out the video on screen right now to see geophysical technologist Kevin Brewer talk about a piece of equipment he designed and built that allows for the creation of detailed images of the ground very similar to an ultrasound. Make sure to do all the YouTube things, like and subscribe, and keep an eye out for our next video.